Movie Park Germany is, well, as the name suggests, it's a movie-themed park in Germany. The park is located in North Rhine-Westphalia, which is north of Duisburg and Dusseldorf. They're home to eight roller coasters and a variety of flat rides, an awesome stunt show, various themed areas including Nickelodeon, Star Trek, Old Hollywood, and the park has had a really interesting history. At one point in time, the park was called Warner Brothers Movie World. Later, it was purchased by Premier Parks, who owned Six Flags. They operated the park for a while. And then in 2005, the park was renamed Movie Park Germany, where today is operated by Park Ace Renudos, who operates a bunch of parks all across the world, including many others in Europe and the United States. I had the opportunity to visit for my first time this past summer, and to be honest, I had heard mixed things. I had heard from a lot of people that, oh, this is like one of the lesser theme parks in Germany, you know? Everyone talks about Fantasialand and Europa Park, and rightfully so. Those places are amazing. But it seemed like everyone kind of looked down on Movie Park Germany. I actually had a really awesome time here. I think the park had a lot of great things to offer. So I walked away from this place actually thinking that the park receives too much hate and is a lot better than people are giving it credit for. So I'm going to walk through my full experience. We're going to talk about the different themed areas, some of the key rides that you should do when you go here, food, all that good stuff. So let's first start with your arrival experience. One thing that I was really pleased with was that the park is within walking distance distance from the main train station that you take to get to Movie Park Germany. So it's really easy to access. Something else that's kind of cool is Movie Park Germany is located right next to another smaller amusement park called Schlobeck. They're home to one roller coaster and several self-operated attractions. We originally planned on going here while we were at Movie Park because it's just a short walk away, but we ended up staying at Movie Park Germany till close, so naturally we didn't have time for it. But next time it'd be super fun to go. Now when you enter the park, your entrance is themed to old Hollywood, so you'll see lots of references to famous films and movies sets. One of the things that I liked so much is that they had walk around characters on that main street area. Like you saw a director, an actor, there's a camera crew and they're shooting a scene. We also saw like Marilyn Monroe and a Miss Germany model. And then you see some more popular like cartoon characters like SpongeBob and Patrick. And we saw some characters from Paw Patrol. I like this fountain entrance with the Movie Park Germany sign. The first roller coaster you see right away is Star Trek Operation Enterprise, which is interesting because actually the entrance to this attraction is not near the front of the park at all. It's like more so in the middle, but because of its position in the park, you see it right up front, which is still cool. It makes for some great photo ops. Actually, the first ride you'll get to is immediately to your left. It is called Area 51, and it is a water ride. Now, water rides can be hit or miss for me. I enjoy doing them when they're like well themed and they have some notable elements. But sometimes there are attractions that I don't mind skipping. Let me tell you, do not skip the water rides in Movie Park Germany. They were absolutely fantastic. So there's two key ones you gotta do. Area 51, then the other one's called Excalibur. I'll talk about that one later. Area 51 is of course themed to aliens. It's a boat ride. You enter through this like almost like volcano looking thing. There's some amazing theme scenes. You'll see a bunch of different animatronics throughout. They're doing like testing on humans and whatnot, which is pretty crazy. You go backwards at one point. It's got this awesome some drop there at the end. Really great attraction. Actually, I was kind of surprised that with the theme that they went for that this ended up being a water ride at all. It almost lends itself more to like a traditional dark ride, but still very cool. Highly recommend. Something that I immediately picked up on that I loved when I was walking around Movie Park Germany is that they're playing some great music throughout the park. Lots of classic themes because of course the park was at one point owned by Warner Brothers. That's where a lot of that music comes from. So it's also a lot of the same songs that you'll hear at like Universal. Like we heard him playing Harry Potter right as we walked in the park. It was great. At one point, we also heard some show tunes. I recognized some of the songs from like Hairspray. I think music can really enhance a park experience. It really adds to the atmosphere. Just some nice subtle touches that really work here. Last thing I'll really mention about this entry area before we move on to the different theme sections is it definitely gave me Park Warner Madrid vibes, which makes sense. That's another Warner Brothers park. From what I've heard, Movie Park Germany is also very similar in design to the Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia. And of course, kind of a toned down version from like Disney's Hollywood Studios or Universal Studios Florida or Hollywood. You know, a lot of these film-based parks, they all kind of have a similar vibe when you're walking in. So let's talk about some of the more unique sections here. So when you turn right into the park, you're greeted with the Nickelodeon area. And this is fun. I thought this was actually a really nice section. The highlight for me was this SpongeBob splash battle. It was actually a ride that I did not do, but you can see everything from the pathway. I thought it just looked great in the area. As a huge SpongeBob fan, I really appreciated it. I also thought this Avatar The Last Airbender flat ride was very clever. I liked tell you're like on Ang's glider. An attraction I was definitely underwhelmed with was their Ghost Chasers Wild Mouse. It has next to no theming, which is a shame because it's themed to like the Flying Dutchman from SpongeBob. I think they 
definitely could have done more here. I also think they could have done more with Jimmy Neutron's Atomic Flyer. This is a Vacoma family suspended coaster. It opened in 2007. And fortunately, this is one of the models that does not feature the old over the shoulder restraints. It is lap bar only, which definitely makes the experience more comfortable. But like Ghost Chasers, I feel like there's definitely more potential for some theming throughout the layout. So I imagine it's things like that where people say, oh, Movie Park Germany is not that great because they have some rides that definitely lack theming, especially when you compare them to, I mean, Fantasyland is not that far from here. And that's like one of the most themed parks in the world. Last thing I'll talk about with Nickland is another major water ride in the park. This one is themed to Door the Explorer. So it's definitely a bit more family friendly than Excalibur and Area 51. But I love the rock work that they worked in here. It looks very nice. So we'll move on from Nickland. I'll mention briefly that there is a Paw Patrol kids section that is right adjacent to Nickland. That's kind of like a little spinoff area. Some play structures there for the kids. But weirdly enough, there are two other rides located back there that are completely unrelated to Nickelodeon. And that is the Movie Park Studio Tour and the Excalibur Rapids ride. So first I'll mention Excalibur. This is an indoor outdoor attraction that I knew nothing about going in and I was very impressed with. Very story driven. Think of it like King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. You actually walk in and see the round table when you're in the queue. In this case, the plot of the ride is that the Excalibur sword has gone missing and you have to go and find it. And so of course, at the end of the ride, spoiler alert, you do find it. But it's only after you go through a bunch of really cool scenes here. So you load indoors, but I'd say all the best scenes are outdoors, but it's very tucked away and hidden from the rest of the park. So you can really only see everything when you're actually on it. And you don't get too wet on it either, which I really appreciate. You know, a lot of raft rides just get you drenched and that's not really my thing. So this ride absolutely did it for me. This is probably like a top three favorite rapids ride for me. Another ride that you'll find nearby is Movie Park Studios. At this point in time, I have not done a review of this attraction on the channel yet. However, I will at some point because this was a really cool attraction. Probably ended up being my favorite ride at Movie Park Germany, even though it's not the most thrilling. It's just really, really well done. So stay tuned for that video to come. So that's pretty much the right side of the park. Let's work our way back. The next area that you're going to encounter is the streets of New York. As you can imagine, this theme is pretty self-explanatory. You'll see lots of street signs and billboards, various things you'd find in New York City. There are a couple attractions here that we're going to talk about. The first is going to be Crazy Cops New York. This is an absolutely massive stunt show that has a couple show times throughout the day featuring cars doing tricks, things that I've never seen before. It was so cool. Like my mouth was hanging open. I'm like, how on earth are they doing this stuff? It was really well done. I don't know how much I usually recommend, like, go see a show, you know? But I'm definitely glad we saw that one. That was really cool. Right next door is an old school simulator called Time Riders. And this is one that, honestly, I'm not even sure I'd recommend. It used to have this old Batman theme, but obviously they can't have that anymore. So it was interesting to experience. You can see how a lot of the things have changed. So, like, you're in this one room that definitely looks like something that'd be Wayne Manor. An area that it's like, okay, yeah, this was the Batcave. But now it's all themed to time travel. And let me just say, it's very 90s. Like, the screen and storage is very rusty. I wouldn't say the ride was good at all. But I thought the pre-show was pretty cool. And the theming in the queue is cool. I think, however, that this would be definitely one of those attractions that should get an update or just eventually taken out completely and replaced with something better. Now, the last thing I'll talk about in the streets of New York, as you continue down the pathway, you'll encounter Van Helsing's factory. This is a Gerslauer bobsled. Oftentimes, these are rides that are kind of wild mouse-like, but the park already has a wild mouse. And so this one doesn't really have any sections like those switchbacks. It's a lot more twisty, has some really fun helices and great theming throughout. And like some of the other attractions here, it has a really cool queue. So let's move on to Santa Monica, California. This is an entire section kind of inspired from Pacific Park in Southern California. Yes, you heard that right. So this is an area of an amusement park themed to another amusement park. But it felt like there were a lot more rides here than at Pacific Park. I mean, they're pretty much only known for that one roller coaster. Actually, you won't even find a roller coaster in this section, but they do have a disco. I like the colors that they did here, though. Definitely fits in with that beachside and boardwalk feel. This wasn't a land I spent a ton of time in. Actually, I pretty much only used this area to walk through to get to the old western town, which is going to be the next section we're going to talk about. They're home to two roller coasters, Bandit and MP Express. That is a Vacoma SLC. It is absolutely terrible, and Bandit is pretty terrible as well. So I can't say that the rides here are super great, but they do have a stand-up drop tower back here, and those are pretty rare. So if you've done like Acrophobia at Six Flags Over Georgia, or I know Drayton Manor used to have one of these. It's very forceful. This one's not super tall, but does break pretty low to the ground. It also does not have that tilting feature that I know Acrophobia has. So pretty crazy ride. Glad the movie park has this. In this area, all the buildings are meant to look like a film set. I mean, of course, it's paying homage to those classic old Western movies that Hollywood is so famous for. So I like the different setups 
setups that they have here. I think it's also kind of clever because it means they don't have to completely theme the buildings because the theme is not that you're in an old Western town. I'm pretty sure the theme is that you're in an old Western film set. Or at least that's how I interpreted it. But I thought it was cool. I liked it. The last section that we'll talk about is this Star Trek themed area. This is, of course, where Operation Enterprise is. This is the only park in the world to feature something like this. I thought it was neat. It's definitely small. I mean, Operation Enterprise is pretty much the only attraction here. I think I would actually more so refer to this as a plaza than an entire themed area. But still nice. I mean, something I think that's actually really clever is the buildings here are pretty tall. So it actually completely covers Operation Enterprise from the vantage point of when you're walking through the entrance. So you see the entrance, but you don't see the ride. I like that. That's another one that has a really cool queue. There's actually a full separate review already up on this channel of Star Trek Operation Enterprise. So be sure to go check that out. But that gives you a full idea of what Movie Park Germany offers. For the most part, I would say it felt like each ride tries to be theming focused. I don't know if all of them necessarily succeed, but many of the attractions do have like a pre-show, some cool decorations around it. So I did appreciate that, even though at times some of the theming did feel a little cheap. I can see how maybe compared to some other parks, it could bother you, especially if you visit Movie Park Germany a lot. You'll probably pick up on that sort of stuff. I would say the only times that I think it's really a problem is if it looks like the theming is not being kept up well and it's like falling apart. But for the most part, I thought everything looked pretty nice, so I didn't mind. So last thing I'll talk about is the food. And we actually had a pretty cool experience with this. So we got a wristband that gave us unlimited food throughout the day, but it's only valid at four places. So it had its pros and cons. The pros were we could get food and drink as much as we wanted, which honestly I think is kind of interesting because then like, why would you not just get one wristband and then just keep going back to the food locations to get it for your whole party? But I guess it's just expected that you won't abuse it. So it's sort of the honor system. I wish that the wristband worked at more places. We used it to get a lot of snacks. Our main meal during the day was at this pizza place by Bandit. Their flavors were margarita, tuna fish, salami, and veggie. Some of those are flavors that we are definitely not used to seeing in the United States. So I tried tuna fish pizza. That was pretty interesting. Interesting. I've been told that's a classic though around there, but I was happy to try it. One thing we wanted to take advantage of, but it closed early, was the Van Helsing food buffet. I've been told this is cool for the atmosphere, but the food itself is not that great, and there's definitely better places in the park to eat, but still would have been nice to try. I was also surprised that there was a Dunkin' Donuts here and a Subway, so it's nice that they have those options. I did not like that a lot of the food places closed early before the park did, and because Movie Park Germany closed early as it was, we were trying to take advantage of the wristband to get like dinner before everything closed, but we were too late. So be aware of that if you go. Overall though, it was a very positive experience at Movie Park Germany. The park is definitely not perfect. There's definitely some things that could be better about it. I think if I could do anything to this park, it'd honestly be arm seeing Bandit. I just thought that wooden coaster was so terrible. I think it would be an amazing hybrid and would make me want to go back to Movie Park Germany even more. Because as I mentioned, right now, I think my favorite ride is the studio tour. I thought Star Trek was fun, but it wasn't like amazing. If they arm seed Bandit, then that would give them that amazing ride that I think they need. And hopefully that would make a lot more people want to visit here. Unfortunately, it sounds like that's probably not going to happen. And Bandit is popular as it is, which I don't understand, but whatever. Those are just some of my thoughts on Movie Park Germany. Let me know down in the comments below if you've been here, if you agree with the points that I've brought up, if you think there's anything I missed, be sure to post all that down below. And if you're new to the channel, I hope that you'll check out some of the other amusement park reviews that we have available in a playlist organized in alphabetical order. You can see reviews of parks from all across the world. So be sure to go check that out. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.